What advantage, if any, is there for the Giants that their defensive coordinator knows Lamar Jackson and that offense as well as anyone possibly can? Well, you, you have a little bit of an advantage when it comes to just the things that affect them. When you, when you can just look and go down a list of each player and say, okay, these are the things that they like, these are the things that they don't like, you could have a, a little bit of an advantage, but at the end of the day, it's all going to come down to execution and, and which team can go out there and execute at a high level and do that repeatedly. So I think I'm picking the Ravens in this particular matchup because the Giants, yes, they've done well, but have they played a team that we think is going to be a team at the end of the season that's going deep into the playoffs? The Ravens, obviously, with Lamar, I personally think they're going to be one of those teams. So it's going to, it's going to be really hard for them to stop Lamar. You don't stop Lamar. He's that explosive. So how do you limit him? Listen, I'm not a D.C., but I know it's going to be really tough. No question about it. Now, again, they did just beat the Packers last week. I know there's a lot of split opinion on just how good the Packers are. And Rodgers, while an all-time great, is clearly RCA. A very different challenge than Lamar Jackson mm -hmm. presents. But I see the Giants under your name as well. Why do you like the Giants? Yeah. Well, one, I think the way that the Giants are playing offense, they're a team against the Baltimore Ravens that can find ways to score points, especially with Saquon Barkley being as explosive as he is and Brian Dayball doing the best he can to work pieces around what is an underwhelming wide receiver group. But I'm going to go to the defense. Here's what's first. When you're Wink Martindale, you spent the last years in training camp playing against Lamar Jackson, game planning against Lamar Jackson, having conversations with Greg Roman about how they want to use Lamar Jackson, how you would have attack him doing some of those self scout things scout things here's the other thing Daniel Jones just runs the ball all the time, too. We're not <laughs> acting like Daniel Jones is a guy that doesn't do his own read and doesn't utilize it. So you're also practicing against it each and every day in training camp now with the New York Giants. Is Daniel Jones what Lamar Jackson is from a talent level, from an accomplishment level, from a success level? Absolutely not. But the styles of play are similar. So the New York Giants as players some of the similar things they'll see this weekend. Also, Wink Martindale understands how to maneuver, how to put pressure in the face of Lamar Jackson, how to get the football out of his hands and make him get it to his playmakers very early. So I'm excited to see how they adjust defensively if you're the New York Giants and then what Saquon Barkley can do to loosen up the back end of the Baltimore Ravens and give Daniel Jones some opportunities outside. You know, Sacho, I'm not sure I've ever seen a more confused fan base. I live here in New York, of course, and <laughs> as I walk around the streets, I got giant fans walking up to me all the time saying, hey, are we any good? Like, they, <laughs> they can't make up their own minds. The Giants are 4-1. and one. I've never seen a 4-1 and one fan base as confused as the Giant fans are because they're surprised. How good is this team? This team is good. This team is good. It goes to that defense. You have to point to that defense, what Wink Martindale is doing. He's bringing a dominant, physical, attacking version of defense to New York, but it's not just that. I think the Brian Dable effect is even the bigger reason. People are saying coach of the year, and they're right. Brian Dable has, has, has tailored this offense to Daniel Jones' strengths. There were so many question marks about Daniel Jones, all these things. And all of a sudden, he's saying, hey, let's not turn the ball over. Let's protect you in the pocket. Let's do things where, uh, like I did with Josh Allen, where yeah. there were question marks early on. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, wow, you're managing the game we want you to manage. And then, oh, by the way, Saquon Barkley is healthy. And so you get all those pieces together, you eliminate the mistakes. Now you've got a team that's being coached by a guy who knows how to win, an offensive line that's significantly better, some guys who were brought over from Buffalo. Now you're starting to win games. So this team is not a fluke. The 4-1 and record is not an accident. They were playing banged up last week. Mm -hmm. A lot of their starting receivers didn't travel, and they still won, and they won because they're defense. And yet you like Baltimore in this one, and you like the Giants, Brooke. Why? I do, because coaching matters. Because not only does Wink Martindale have this edge with the defense, I think, I also really like what Brian Dayball's done, and I think you're seeing the way that his players are responding. And Isaiah McKenzie, who played with him in Buffalo, was talking to our good friend Elena Getzenberg, the Bills reporter, and he told her that Dayball is a guy who he holds you accountable, but he doesn't dress you down. He's not screaming at you. He's a guy that players want to play for. He's known for these just random FaceTimes. He has guys over at his house, and I think there is a huge buy-in. I mean, did you see the dancing in the locker room? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, maybe, maybe if the Giants win, we'll see Wink dancing in there with him. But to <laughs> me, coaching is the difference in this one. Uh, and also, to your point, I, I do think that the Giants are a good team, but I, I also saw the Steelers go undefeated for a while in 2020, right? So 
it could be a little bit of a mirage. Yeah, I had a cup of tea in Buffalo. I spent a little bit of time in Buffalo towards the end of my career. And one of the few guys I connected with was Brian Dayball. You know, everyone knows the, the pregame meals, night before the game, you're sitting down with your teammates and your friends and some coaches. I didn't know a lot of guys on that team. He was one of the dudes who literally sat down, asked about me, my wife, our kids, figuring out schools, all that kind of stuff. Right, cool story. I ended up, uh, fin up finishing up with Tampa Bay. Brian Dayball gets the job for the New York Giants. We exchange numbers, whatever. I just text him saying, hey, congrats. Seconds later, I get a response. Seconds I, I played for two weeks with the dude, yet he's responding. So for me, the character of Brian Dayball is what brings out the best in his players. Players understand guys they want to play for. He is that dude. Did you just say cup of tea instead of cup of coffee? I mean, the expression oh, no, is dude. I had a cup of coffee in I Buffalo. had too many cups. Most of my career was about four years here, four years there. That's I, a cup of cup. I, I don't drink coffee, though. So. No, but but so you went tea? I like it. I don't I drink just, coffee. I haven't heard it before. You had a <laughs> cup of tea in Buffalo. That's a good I, I have a side with the wings. Hey, it might go very nicely. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.